from Athens, Ohio, Ramblin' with Doc and Merle Watson. Arthel, A-R-T-H-E-L, Arthel Lane Watson. Uh, the Doc is actually a handle. I guess I was about 18, Greg, uh, doing a little radio show from Lenore, town about 25 miles from here with, on Saturday mornings by uh, remote control from a furniture store and a bunch of folks had come in to hear me and another old boy picked some on the radio that morning and the fellow who was doing the announcing said, uh, his name's Paul Arthel. He said, uh, what's a good short name for you for the radio show? And some young lady that had come in there to watch his pick said, call him Doc and it stuck. Anyway, what I started to say, if you came to see a formal set, we'll disappoint the heck out of you. But if it's just some picking and grinning, uh, that's what we're just about to do right now. <laughs> It was late last night when old Willie came home. I heard him rapping on the door. He is a slipping and a sliding with them new shoes on. Mama said, Willie, don't you rap no more. Way downtown, fooling around, took me to the gym. Oh, me and it's old, I ain't no one to go, my baby. Wish I was over at my sweet Sally's house, sitting in that big armchair. One arm around my old guitar, and the other one around my dear. Way downtown, a foolin' around, took me to the jail. Oh, me and it's old, I ain't no one to go, my bail. One old shirt is about all I've got, and a dollar is all that I crave. I brought nothing with me into this soul world, and I'll take nothing to my grave. Way downtown, a fooling around, took me to the gym. Oh, me and it's old, I ain't no one to go, my babe. about my turn to uh, introduce, I reckon, these, these two fellows right here. Somebody already said some kind words about me, so I better, I better say something about these boys right here. Anyway, a few folks uh, looking in on us tonight. Can't, if you don't know who I am, I ain't going to tell you. <laughs> uh, a good friend of mine over there on the end doing the uh, good guitar playing, you'll find out how good he can pick directly when we turn him loose on something. My son, Merle Watson. Let's make him welcome, would you? He's, he's from down there at Deep Gap where I live. And the man in the middle here, well, he's originally a Tar Heel, but he's presently from Nashville, Tennessee, Mr. T. Michael Coleman. Let's make him welcome, would you? Michael wrote this next little song right here. He must have been awful lonesome about some pretty little girl. It's called Sadie. High on a hill sits a whippoorwill Singing out his old lonesome song Is it he or I wonder if it's me For I've been away from Sadie too long 
Sadie, Sadie, oh what a lady, Sadie, Sadie, oh what a girl, Sadie, Sadie, oh what a lady, Sadie, 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 you're my world. Oh, pick it, girl. Oh, the scent of your hair and your pretty face so fair Haunt me when I'm away from you and Those pretty eyes that say I love you every day Turning all my stormy skies to blue Sadie, Sadie Oh, what a lady Sadie, Sadie Oh, what a girl Sadie, Sadie Oh, what a lady, Sadie, 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 you're my world. While the moon shines bright, will you meet me tonight? Under that old lonesome pine And I'll ask you till you tell me that you will That you'll forever be mine Sadie, Sadie, oh what a lady Sadie, Sadie, oh what a girl Sadie, Sadie, oh what a lady Sadie, 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 you're my world My first musical instrument, string instrument as such, was a little homemade banjo that my dad made me when I was 11. But I reckon, uh, although it came second in, in my life as far as owning a musical instrument, my dad helped me get me a little guitar when I was 13. I believe it was a Stella, yeah. It was a Stella guitar. And I fooled around with it some along. Uh, but I really started trying to learn something about the guitar. Oh, in my later teens, 17 or 18 years old, I began to work on it some, you know, and try to really learn how to play something. And I'd go to fiddler's conventions, played a whole bunch on the street, and earned a few dollars on Saturdays, on the weekends, when the weather wasn't too cold. Uh, and Ralph Rensler came down to the Union Grove Folk Festival along with a fellow named Gene Earl. They uh, both were living in Passaic, New Jersey at the time. And Ralph was working with uh, the Greenbrier Boys group. You know, you've heard of them, I guess. They were part of the folk festival movement in the, in the early 60s. Anyway, Ralph came down here looking for Clarence Ashley, one of the old timers in country music. Uh, and Clarence, when he found him at Union Grove, told him about me, and Ralph came and got acquainted. And when he heard me play, uh, as to make a sh uh, long story short, he convinced me over my better judgment that I had something to offer in the way of entertainment in the folk music revival. So I got started in it, along with my father-in-law and my oldest brother. We made a few trips together. And a couple of fellows, Fred Price and Clint Howard, along with Tom Ashley. And then in 64, uh, with Ralph's help, I did my first solo concert tour. And in June of 64, I, I came back in May, and Merle had started learning to play the guitar. And in June, uh, June of 64, he went to the Berkeley Folk Festival with me. And from then up to 66, he played some on the weekends. He was still in school. And in 66, Merle started working on the road solid with me. Mm. And well, we've been at it ever since. Lord help us. <laughs> <laughs>
when you get that guitar back up over there, so I guess we better do a little flat picking right here. Some of these fellas might say, hey, they never knew no flat picking for us tonight. We'll do a little of the Big Sandy and a little bit of old Joe Clark. And then, uh, when you get down there somewhere in old Joe Clark, Merle, I might grab a hold of that and play a little twin leading. this time when some of them good songs are being written that Bob Dylan wrote a whole batch of good songs and I'd like to get Merle to do a little finger style on one that Bob wrote called Don't Think Twice when he gets all geared up over there I run old Joe over one of them wires Merle untune one of them there <laughs> a little bit two three four Ain't no use to sit and wonder why, babe, if you don't know by now. Ain't no use to sit and wonder why, babe, cause it don't matter anyhow. When that rooster crows at the break of dawn, look out your window, honey, I'll be gone. You're the reason that I'm traveling on. Don't think twice, it's all right. There ain't no use in turning on your light, babe Like you never did before And there ain't no use in calling out my name, gal Cause I can't hear you anymore Still I wish that there was something That you could do or say To try to make me change my mind and stay But we never did too much talking anyway Don't think twice, it's all right
Traveling down this long, lonesome road, babe Where I'm bound, I can't tell Goodbye's just too good a word, gal So honey, just let me say fare thee well And I'm a-thinking and a-wondering As I walk down this old road I've loved a woman but a child, I'm told I gave her my heart, but she wanted my soul Don't think twice, it's all right Greg, and if I could see, I never would have gone into music as a profession. If I'd have done some other job, I wouldn't have... Uh, somebody said, well, you wouldn't have been as many places and you wouldn't know as many people. No. But I would very likely know my family a lot better by knowing the children and being with them a lot more. I could come home at night. But it wasn't meant to be that way. And so it, it forced me to use that part of the talent that I was born with the musical inclination that whatever I may have I, I think it's God given and it, the, the handicap forced me to develop that because I needed to earn a living it didn't make me listen any better and I don't think it made me learn any better uh, maybe if I could see I might have learned a little more about the theory of music even though it would have been a hobby I think I still would have played uh, a lot but I uh, I don't think it had that much effect. I think the the handicap in other ways affected me personally. I, it caused me to have a, a persecution complex or insecurity for a long time. And all at once I, uh, I realized that in, in all probability, and I don't know uh, what your feelings are about this thing, I think the, the, that the handicap was allowed to be mine as a deterrent. I think I might have been a, maybe a, a bit stuck up or haughty. If it hadn't been for that, and I think maybe the good Lord thought I needed it. <laughs> I, I really have come to that conclusion over the past few years. There's a feeling about this place that it's just exactly like it was when I step outside sometimes on a cold winter morning when the air is so cold that it almost bites your nose the very minute you step out in it or your ears. Or a beautiful spring morning when you can hear maybe 15 different species of birds within a three-minute period, or maybe it went in one minute. And the feeling is still the same as it was when I was a little boy. A, I love this country, the mountains. The, I think it's a, the spirit of it, you might say. I don't know hardly how to put it into words. And somebody asked me once why I didn't move to the city since I'm in the music business. I said, well, I have to travel all over the country. Anyhow, so I might as well live where I like it the best. All right. Summertime and the living is easy. The fish are a jumping and the cotton is high. Your pap is rich and your mam is good looking. Hush, little baby. Honey, don't you cry One of these mornings You're gonna rise up singing Gonna spread out your wings And take to the sky Until that day You can hush up your crying Cause your pappy and your mammy standing by
time And the living is easy Lord, the catfish are jumping And the cotton is high Your pappy's rich Yeah, your mammy's good looking mm. Hush, little baby Honey, don't you cry Hush, little baby Don't you We have a new record that'll be coming out in the spring, and it incorporates everything from a good old traditional banjo tune all the way around to uh, a Dan Fogelberg tune, which we ain't gonna do right now. <laughs> We're gonna do one that uh, Brother Merle Travis wrote back in the 40s, and it's a fun song about the inconveniences of the smoking habit. Not only, he, he didn't write this for the Cancer Society, he wrote it just because, they, well, he'd been bothered some. <laughs> and it's called Smoke, Smoke, Two, Three, Four. <laughs> Go, Michael. Now I'm a fellow with a heart of gold With the ways of a gentleman, I've been told The kind of a guy that wouldn't even harm a flea But if me and a certain character ever met The guy that invented the cigarette I'd murder that son of a gun in the first degree Well, it ain't because I don't smoke myself And I don't reckon they hand you your health I smoked them about half my life and I ain't dead yet But nicotine slaves are all the same At a patent party or poker game Everything's gotta stop while I have a cigarette Smoke, smoke, smoke that cigarette Puff, puff, puff it if you smoke yourself to death Tell St. Peter at the Golden Gate that you hate to make him wait You just gotta have another cigarette In a game of chance the other night, old Aunt Fortune was doing me right The kings and the queens just kept coming around I caught a fool, and I bet I'm high, but my bluff didn't work on this certain guy, cause he just kept raising and laying that money down. He'd raise me and I'd raise him. <clears throat> Sweated blood, got a sink or swim, but he finally called and he didn't raise the bet. I said, Ace is full, pal, how about you? And he says, well, I'll tell you in a minute or two, but right now, I just gotta have a cigarette. Smoke, smoke, smoke that cigarette. Puff, 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 and if you smoke yourself to death Tell St. Peter at the Golden Gate That you hate to make it wait You just gotta have another cigarette The other night then I had a date With the cutest little gal She sure did rate She was a high-bred, uptown, fancy little thing she said she loved me, and it seemed to me that things were just about like they ought to be, so hand in hand we walked right on down Lover's Lane. She was oh so far from a chunk of ice, and her smooching party was going real nice, and so help me, folks, I think I might have been there yet. When I gave her a kiss and a little squeeze, she says, Doc, excuse me, please, now let's bound to have another cigarette. <laughs> smoke, smoke, smoke that cigarette. That ruined my vanity. Pop, pop, pop it if you smoke yourself to death. Tell St. Peter and Golden Gate that you hate to make it wait. You just gotta have another cigarette. I've heard a, a lot of funny things that have, some of them probably really happened and somebody that wanted to have a good laugh out of some folks probably made some of them up. There's a good chance that this little tale I'm going to tell you did happen. There was a, a very devoted Quaker fellow moved into a community and you're a Baptist and in spite of their differences in religion, they got along something wonderful as neighbors helping each other with farm chores and in every way. The stock sale in that Quaker was unlucky enough to buy the meanest milk cow that the good Lord ever let give milk. He kept her the rest of the summer, and she'd bruised his poor old knee quite a few times with that wicked hind foot while he was sitting there on that stool of milk. And one morning after it come a big frost, 
And that old cow had been down that bar patch and scratched them udders all over. He come out there to milk, and she stood there and shivered and quivered like old Elvis, you know, till, till the milk was about ready to come over the top of the bucket, and the foam was, you know. She kicks Quaker stool and all over, and he rolls down the bank, and he gets up and looks at her. Oh, man, he's mad, but he don't say nary, nary a word till his temper cools. And he walks up, and he pats her on the head. He said, Nay, bossy, I cannot strike thee, but on the morrow I'll sell thee to a Baptist, and he'll beat the hell out of thee. <laughs> <laughs> His little country church decided they'd get him a, one of them preachers that had been to the seminary and know them $5 words and let their little country preacher go. And when he moved in to the parsonage, he was a fellow that wore the suit and tie the whole week long and drove a big Cadillac. He was driving along on the little country road through the little hamlet one Sunday afternoon after the sermon, and he saw this little old red pickup truck wobbling along coming right close up behind him in his rearview mirror. About the time the old boy went by, and he almost sideswiped him because he'd had a few drinks to sober up on from a drunk he'd been on the night before. <laughs> Poor fellow, he must be sick. He said under his breath, as soon as I get the chance in a straight place, I'll hit my passion gear to get around that fool. He'll run down the road and kill me. Right just in a minute, here comes a little straight patch in that road. And <laughs> he takes off in that Cadillac. When he gets to the end of the straight place, he's by the little red pickup truck, but she won't corner. <laughs> she goes off over the embankment, tires the Cadillac all to pieces. Well, here comes a little red pickup truck. He sees good old Samaritan, you know, and wants to help him. <laughs> the thing's missing on three or four cylinders. He rolls up to the edge of the embankment and stops it right easy, and he gets out. Hey, fella, are you hurt down there? And then, luckily, the preacher nor his wife either weren't hurt much. He was helping her out of the wreck. Preacher looks up at him and kind of grins. He said, no, we're not hurt. The Lord's riding with us. He says, well, I believe you better let me take him the rest of the way. You're going to kill him. <laughs> two people. It would be his grandfather, Gaither Carlton, and, and uh, the late Gaither Carlton. He was with us up until 72, and then the late John Hurt. Uh, my mother started me out when Dad was out on the road. And the first two years, I learned from just being around the old best. Yeah. I guess my main influence was Mississippi John, John Hurt. He learned an awful lot from his grandfather on the banjo. In fact, always frailing, just it came from Gaither, the style. And John Hurt, well, John Hurt made an impression on everybody that listened to him. It wasn't only his music as, as a man. It was on the first concert I ever was on. Boy, I just, uh, what? I couldn't believe <laughs> the music he did. John Hurt was one of my favorite people and favorite musicians out of the uh, rediscoveries of the old timers and the folk scene in the 60s. And Merle and I had the pleasure of playing a whole lot of music on shows with John Hurt, and we actually had the pleasure of sitting down and picking some 
tunes with John a lot of times. And uh, we'd like to do a song here that me and Michael kind of likes to sing, too. I kind of like the flavor of this song. And I guarantee you Merle will give you some of the John Hurt flavor on the guitar. He pl plays a little stronger than Brother John did. But you'll hear the flavor in there, those of you that are familiar with John's music. Make me down a pallet on your floor, all right, Merle. Oh, pick it, son. Make me down a pallet on your floor. Make me down a pallet on your floor. Honey, make it down, make it soft and low. And then maybe my good gal, she won't know. I'm going up the country through that sleet and snow. I'm going up the country through that sleet and snow. Yes, I'm going up the country through that sleet and snow. Ain't no telling just how far I'll go. Get my breakfast here and my dinner in Tennessee. Get my breakfast here and my dinner in Tennessee. Well, I'll get my breakfast here and my dinner in Tennessee. I told you I was coming, so you better look for me. Make me down a pallet on your floor. Hey, make me down a pallet on your floor. Honey, make it down, make it soft and low. But then baby, my good gal, she won't know. All right, boy. Well, now you know that I can't lay down on your bed. Hey, you know that I can't lay down on your bed. Uh-uh. Now, honey, I can't lay down across your pretty bed. Cause my good woman, she might kill me dead. And don't you let my good gal catch you here. Don't you let my good gal catch you here. If you do, she might shoot you, cut and stop you too. Hey, there ain't no telling what all that gal might do. Make me down a pallet on your floor. Make me down a pallet on your floor. Honey, make it down, make it soft and low. And then maybe my good gal, she won't know. I've been sleeping my back and shoulders tired <clears throat> The way I've been sleeping my back and shoulders tired Well, the way I've been sleeping my back and shoulders tired I think I'll turn and try sleeping a while on my side Make me down a pallet on your floor Make me down a pallet on your floor Honey, make it down, make it soft and low And then maybe my good gal, she won't know Pick it, son Long about 1939, long about 1939, Brother Roy Acuff recorded a song called The Streamline Cannonball. And I got to think about this song a long time after that one day, and I thought, well, now that Streamline Cannonball didn't waltz down the railroad track. You know, it, it got to move on. Oh, Roy played her kind of like this. She moves along like a cannonball, like a star in its heavenly fly. Well, I thought it ought to go a little different than that, something like a... Along like a cannonball, like a star in its heavenly flight. The lonesome sound of the whistle you love as she rambles on through the night. Long steel rail and a short cross tie. I'm on my way back home. I'm on that train, the king of them all, the streamlined cannonball. Moves along like a cannonball, like a star in its heavenly flight. 
The lonesome sound from the whistle you love As she rambles on through the night I can see a smile on the engineer's face And although he's old and gray A contented heart he waits for his call On that streamlined cannonball She moves along like a cannonball Like a star in its heavenly flight The lonesome sound of the whistle you love As she rambles on through the night Light she beams all out through the night And the firebox flash you can't see I ride the blinds, it's the life that I love It's home sweet home to me She moves along like a cannonball Like a star in its heavenly flight The lonesome sound from the whistle you love As she rambles on through the night As she rambles on through the night A hundred and eight playing nights this last year. It's still, it robs you of the intimacy of the family life at home. Something that, I guess, I don't know, maybe there are city people that feel as strongly about it that have grown up in the city. But us mountain folk feel pretty strong about families mm -hmm. and the close-knit family life of home. Fireside, being at the supper table and breakfast every morning with your wife and your children. To me, it means a whole lot. And I reckon that's a... Uh, there ain't nothing to be ashamed of, by no means. I think it's, mm -hmm. There's some clubs I like to work. Mm -hmm. But I, I really prefer concerts, mm -hmm. uh, listening audiences. They're much easier to work to. And the set goes so smooth when you have an audience that are really there to hear what you're doing. Mm -hmm. you know? Come to hear. Ladies and gentlemen, songwriter, singer, Grammy Award winner, let us welcome Doc Watson. I've been overtaken by a worried mind 
Will this trouble never set me free? You ask me why I ramble, and you want to know why I roam. You better wondering why I run all around, and I ain't never had a home. My daddy was a gambler. He rambled all over this land. I'm just a chip off the same old block. I'm a natural born gambling man. I'm a natural born gambling man. Yeah, I'm a natural born gambling man. I can throw a step man, follow with a lip. I'm a natural born gambling man. Pick it, son. I rambled off down to Memphis, and then I met old one-eyed Sam. He said, come here, son, let's have a little game. So I threw that money down. He snuck one off of the bottom. I seen him when he got his hand. I pulled my gun and I mowed him down. I'm an natural born gambling man. Well, they hauled me down to Lashville, of course, and locked me in a dirty old cell. But they gave me a number for my name. was a number that I love so well. It is three sevens in the lip. <laughs> That's a good hand. I know right then that I won again. For I'm a natural born gambling man. I'm a natural born gambling man. Yeah, natural born gambling man. Uh huh, I can throw a set man, follow with the left. I'm a natural born gambling man. On the day that I got my pardon, the warden, he says to me, uh, Son, why don't you take some good advice and let that old gambling be? I said, now, nah, look here, Mr. Warden. Bless me, you just play one hand, and I'll bet you ten that you can't win. For I'm a natural born gambling man. I'm a natural born gambling man. I'm a natural born gambling man. Yeah, I can throw a seven and follow the lift. I'm a natural born gambling man. Born gambling man, ooh, an actor born gambling man. Old Jody picked the cotton in the forks of the branch. I'm an actor born gambling man. <laughs> Merle, I believe we're going to uh, be able to get uh, two of John Hurt's tunes in. Did you see me pull that mic off of there, Michael? What about that? Turn that thing around the way I want it to. It run, runs from it just like it's scared of me. If I happen to blow on it right hard, it goes. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, uh, oh, that slide guitar. It is time for that thing on the show. Man. Yeah, man. He's got that. <clears throat> He's gonna get that thing warmed up. Now he plays that job with a, a Sears Roebuck Craftsman socket wrench. He 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 does. <laughs> I'll touch you a third on there. Let me tune this guitar. Oh, it's already right, I thought. That ain't, <clears throat> that ain't no use to be in too big a hurry about it. I'm going to get that uh, damson-flavored harmonica up here. If I can find it out of that pocket there, and we'll uh, do one that John heard. I believe this is one of John's own tunes called... I got the blues and I can't be satisfied. Merle, we'll let you start this at your own discretion, son. <laughs> Well, I got the blues and I can't be satisfied. Yeah, I got the blues and I can't be satisfied. If the blues don't quit, I'll catch that train and ride. I bought my woman great big diamond ring. Yes, I bought my gal a great big diamond ring. I took it right back home, caught her doing that same old thing. I said, baby, what makes you treat your man this way? Hey, honey, what makes you treat your man this way? You know I want anything you give away. All right, son. Well, I grabbed my gun and I broke the barrel right down. Hey, grabbed my shotgun, broke that barrel right down. Lord, I put my baby six feet under the ground. 
Then I cut that joker so long, deep and wide. I cut that joker so long, deep and wide. But I've still got the blues and I can't be satisfied. All right. Whiskey straight will drive your blues away. Hey, whiskey straight will drive your blues away. Well, if that be so, I want to quote today. Yes, I got the blues and I can't be satisfied. Oh, I got the blues and I can't be satisfied. If the blues don't quit, I'll catch that train and ride. Take it one more time. Thank you very much. I'll get that little uh, sheen down there out of my way. I might swallow that thing on the hard notes on this next one right here. Guess we better uh, do a Jimmy Rogers tune, Merle, to get kind of well rounded out. Here's one of the last songs that Jimmy recorded. It's a song that borders on uh, the line of contemporary music from the, the old blue yodel country style things he did. It's called I Miss the Mississippi and You. I'm growing tired of the big city lights Tired of the glamour, tired of the sights I'm always dreaming of roaming once more Back to my home on the old river shore Days are dark and dreary Everywhere I roam Lord, I miss the Mississippi and you And nothing seems to cheer me Under heaven's dome How I long for Mississippi and you Roaming the wide world over Always alone and blue, so blue I am sad and weary, longing to go home Cause I miss the Mississippi and you Mississippi and you And my memories are bringing Those happy days of yours I have spent in Mississippi with you Roaming the wide world over Always Longing for 
for my homeland on that muddy water shore. I miss the Mississippi and you, the Mississippi and you. Here's a little fun song. It's just a, maybe a, a tad rocky the way we do it. It was written by one of the old Tommy Blues uh, songwriters and recorded back in the 30s. And the name of this one is uh, Range Mint Blues. <laughs> Baby, I will split your kindling, honey. I'm on build your fire. I'll do anything your little heart desire, mama. Hey, can you tell me who might your manager be? Well, if you ain't got a manager, make arrangements for me. Oh, no, I ain't too handsome, honey. I don't dress so fine. But when it comes to loving, gal, I'll pacify your mind, mama. Hey, can you tell me who might your manager be? Well, if you ain't got a manager, make arrangements for me. Hey, Ranger, son. Oh, I wish I was a big old fish swimming along in the sea. And I wish some sweet little thing like you would get her hooks in me, mama. Hey, can you tell me who might your manager be? Well, if you ain't got a manager, make arrangements for me. Provider, baby, I ain't gon' fail. I got no other women tied to my coattail, mama. Hey, can you tell me who might your manager be? Yeah, well, if you ain't got a manager, make arrangements for me. I take her out together, son. to keep the music alive, I guess we could, and yet not become known as art musical hardheads in the folk music world sticking to one little niche. We added a, a whole lot to the sets as we came along without uh, throwing away the roots. Homemade music, huh? I don't, I don't think you can find a better word for it. So, I pick what I hear at the time, and I might not play a tune the same way tomorrow night that I'll do it tonight. <laughs> what do you think of that, man? <laughs> Thank you very much. You know, uh, I told the man on an interview a while ago, I told Ed that uh, my first instrument was a little five-string banjo, but actually it wasn't. It was one of them little things right there. The first thing I ever had, a little, little bitty boy used to get one for Christmas every year. They used to cost about a quarter, and now they're about $10. And there's a national anthem we've got one that they make you stand up to at the ball games that goes well we're all familiar with that and there's another one that was popular way back yonder in the colonial days and 
then there's another one that goes like this. I was in the land of cotton The old times there are not forgotten Look away, look away, look away In Dixieland, in Dixieland Where I was born, was early on One frosty morn Look away, look away, look away In Dixieland Well, I wish I was in Dixie away Hooray! I wish I was in Dixieland To live and die and take my stand away, away Yes, away down south in Dixie <laughs> And God bless every one of you. The preceding program was produced in part through a grant from the Ohio Educational Broadcasting Network Commission and through a grant from the Ohio Arts Council.